What's up, Nick? What's up? Not a, um, as usual, I guess the helium hacks happy hour, um, has is, is well into its second hour. So <laughs> yeah. I got to start coming prepared too. I mean, this is supposed to be a proper happy hour, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Um, indeed, man. So, Hey, you, you dropped a new release the other day, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know what day it is. They're all kind of blurring together, but yeah. <laughs> It's Groundhog Day. Come on, man. Yeah. I actually just did a release like 10 minutes ago. Helium Bridget's looking awesome, man. For real. Thank it you. It's really great. I really like it. I know a lot of people really like it. They're talking it up like crazy. Yeah, yeah. I like the F I like the effort that's been put into it. You can you can see it. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I um yeah, like 10 minutes ago i just uh this is all kind of travis's fault actually i I was, trying to, <laughs> I was trying to figure out how i was gonna do these uh custom kml layers and um instead of starting with that which seemed a little bit more complicated i started with custom mapbox styles because it has a similar architecture under the hood so uh i didn't get the kml's working uh, but I did get the map box styles working. So about 10 minutes ago, I launched the ability to uh, go create your own map box style in map box studio. And then as long as it's published in public, you can copy it and then pull it into your own helium vision. So nobody else will have access to it, but um, you can use as many of those as you want. You can remove them if you don't, uh, don't want to use them anymore, but. Um, and I yeah. can share those with other people. If I mean, yeah. if, yeah, yeah, you're you're it's got to be public to work. So certainly you could share it with other people if if you come up with a super killer style. Um, cool. You know, maybe you can like uh, charge for it or something. I don't know. <laughs> can you explain? Can you? Uh, I can't assume that a little bit. Can you sp explain what you're talking about? He came out. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who Jack, are you? What what's going on here? Uh, <laughs> to, uh, should I share my screen? Yeah, I know, I know you're a developer or be behind Helium Vision. I know that. Demo but I didn't know how to part, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a geek. Uh, <laughs> great. Let's see here. Um, so, let's see. You are you tired and you can go to sleep. Yeah, right. I, uh, it's a misfire here. It's, it's, uh, 30 minutes up to 1 a.m. here, and I'm just assembling glamorous walkers. So. <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, you have my dedication. Dedication. I like that. <laughs> nice. Keep up the great work, Slavin. We love what you're doing, man. I don't know. Maybe I maybe for I sure. broke something. Uh, if, if there is someone who is waiting for his glamorous it will be one batch is going tomorrow. So th that's right. one happy new. Yeah, we got uh, you, Nick. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, uh, I might have broke something on prod. I might have to be here for a short minute and then take off and go figure out what I did. Um, so so here in um, the, the toolbar, you've got uh, map styles. And so now here are the uh, default styles that ship with Helium Vision. But you can uh, fire up Mapbox Studio, so studio.mapbox.com, and um, this link actually takes you to the like sales page where you can sign up for an account. But I already have one, and then here is a, a custom style that I made for the demo video on um, YouTube. But uh, you know you can open it up and and tinker with all the different colors, nice. topography, and I mean, it's super, super robust in terms of editing um, the map. And honestly, I, I don't even know how to do it. I mean, it's, it's just super, super robust. Um, but once you have your map, however you want it, you can come in here and snag the uh, style URL. And again, it has to be public. Um, and I've already made this one public. So now the option is to make it private. But Originally, when you publish it, there will be a, an option here to make public. So I can snag that, and then I come back over to um, Helium Vision and hit Add Custom Style. 
and then custom style and um, put in my URL that we just grabbed from Mapbox Studio and then save that. And when it boots back up, it should be using that style. That's killer, man. And yeah. hey, so in, in your channel, in the Helium Vision channel over on Discord, if I wanted to publish, uh, could I just like tag it in a, a post on, on that Discord, like map style? And so when yeah. you're searching through, you could find like, um, you know. Uh, yeah, uh, we, should, we should come up with something uh, for that. And, um, and maybe, you know, it'd be kind of fun to have like, I don't know how we'd manage that, um, but it'd be kind of fun to have a list somewhere in here of like public styles yeah. that people want to share. Um, that'd be kind of fun. I love I, it, man. I, I like the idea of trying to make it more community oriented, you know, or, or more interactive, right? Everybody's using Helium Vision for their own um, planning, but there's there's going to be some opportunities for overlap and, and, and interaction in there. So that'd be cool. You could do a GitHub. Yeah, I, th I thought about that. Um, same thing for we've got we've got some uh, decoders that have been tweaked to. Yeah for the Helium Vision format. And, and so I need to get those submitted to the um, Helium's repo of decoders. I've been slacking on that. You look tired, man. <laughs> I, I am a little bit tired. You know, <laughs> early on, there's like endless amounts of energy, but um, I've been doing like seven days a week, 16 hour days for yeah. like a month now. So I'm, I'm pretty well spent. I feel you, man, I feel you. But um, but seriously, I I I think I just kind of offhand mentioned the you know custom map box what a few days ago, and now it's it's in play. It's it's I mean that's that that's truly amazing, man. Like it was the, it was your KML uh, comment <laughs> yesterday. I thought I was going to be able to pull it off in like twenty four hours, but the KML files the size is is problematic right because it crashes the browser if the, if the KML file is too big so well the size I was I was yeah yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at um, I mean it's it's gonna be problematic anyway for helium vision in general because I'm allowing so many layers and and I, I really like the idea of allowing custom layers um, which is you know that's what we were attempting to pull off um, and so I'm going to have to look at a tiling service. So, you know, that keep, keep the front end layers as light as possible. And, you know, like the online hotspots, you know, that's going to grow eight to 10 X um, in the next, what, six to, to eight months, probably. So that layer alone is, is going to become much, much heavier. Have you looked at the, um, looked at the tiling uh, repos through Helium? Uh, no. Well, I, I, Joey mentioned that they're using tiling for, for the coverage, but I'm going to end up, I probably will end up piping things into Mapbox's tiling service. So that way we'll have some layers, like I, it'd be great to be able to, to use the coverage uh, tiles out of the box. That way I wouldn't have to recreate that, but certain, you know, certain tiles would be ones that are specific to um, Helium Vision computed layers, right? Like the average right. board scale, yeah. as an example, is a layer that we generate um, when we do our sync that, you know, no, to my knowledge, nobody else uh, in the Helium ecosystem is doing. So, so regardless, we'll have to invest in that. All, um, all good things, you know, things that we'll solve, but just getting there incrementally. This is awesome, man. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, did anybody have any questions? Otherwise, I'm gonna bounce and go figure out what the heck's going on. Is uh, my prod? My prod is. Oh, it did boot. Never mind. It looked like it was stalled out for a minute, and I was starting to, you know, panic. That developer, you know, there's issues on prod panic. <laughs> yeah. Anders, did that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, it did absolutely. So I had another question for you because I I, I haven't just used Helium Vision yet. Uh, I was looking at that you know, hotspot RF a while back and I really didn't like it so much. And uh, and then I've been using Cloud RF instead directly. And I understand that you guys are using Cloud RF, like RF, you know, APIs, right? Yeah, yeah. So Cloud RF uh, is, is the engine behind uh, both 
the area simulations and the point to multi point simulations. Yep. Um, and, you know, to be, I think I can say this with a, a reasonable degree of certainty that, you know, Alex is happy that Helium Vision exists for the Helium community because his, you know, uh, the Helium ecosystem was not his primary target market, right? It kind of landed in his lap. I think some tweets went out or something and and um, all of a sudden people were like, hey, you know, Cloud RF's a great tool. And um, and so it generated a lot of work for him. Um, and, and in reality, his focus is on, you know, really large scale um, yeah. implementations. And so uh, Helium Vision actually per presented a good partnership uh, mm -hmm. because we took a lot of the customer service off of his plate and, and we're engaging directly with the Helium, uh, the Helium community and ecosystem. And yet we're still exposing the power of, of Cloud RF. Mm -hmm. So it's been a great partnership. Alex is a, a phenomenal um, guy to be working with. I'm really grateful that he's been as supportive as he has been to me. Uh, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm bugging him when I'm, I'm passing on, uh, you know, when, when there's simulation hiccups, right? And people are like, hey, what's, what's going on with this particular tile or this particular region? Um, I, I feel like I'm bugging him a little bit, but he's been fantastic, you know, excellent customer support. And he even chimes in, you know, sometimes uh, we'll get RF specific questions in the Helium Vision channel and he'll hop in and answer those questions, which is, mm -hmm. is really helpful. Do, do you know how good the map data is? Because I, I'm in California. So, you know, my first network will be here, you know, Los Angeles and San Francisco Bay Area, but I'm also thinking about, I have a house in Sweden, so I want to do some, Sweden is pretty undeveloped for, you know, for helium specific, but I don't know how, how good is the map data? What, what do you guys get? You get it from, is it Google or Google map data, or do you know where it comes from? It could be clutter and stuff. How, how accurate is it? Or, it's, you know, it's, it's proprietary. So I don't know where uh, his, his data comes from, but I do know that if you if you have specific geographic knowledge and you run a simulation and it looks inaccurate, mm -hmm. I've been able to pass that on to uh, Alex and mm -hmm. and he generally can rerun whatever he needs to to update his layers. Okay, um, because th there's there's been a couple times where he like uh, an example in San Diego recently he said or somebody sent me um, a request saying hey this this doesn't look right. There's kind of a hard edge that that you know the person knew yep. was was inaccurate, and so I was able to pass that information on to mm -hmm. Alex, and and uh, I kind of jokingly said, you know, he kicked the server, and uh, you know the server, you know, re yeah. redid its thing, and then the simulation um, yeah. was was fixed. So I would say, generally speaking, in the big cities, it's it's uh, good, but certainly if you find something that seems mm -hmm. questionable, um, let us know. The, yep. oh. the um clutter data is there though i do know that yeah. that you know it's not like our line of sight uh profiling currently in helium vision does not include clutter it's just ground elevation mm. uh, but that's because uh it's utilizing the uh, google maps elevation api mm. and when i pivot over to the cloud rf um line of sight profile then that will include clutter. Mm. And our point to multi-point simulation already includes clutter. Mm. Yeah, so because uh, Cloud RF has a lot of, you know, things you can tweak, right? Different clutter, different different propagation models, et cetera, et cetera. So it'd be interesting to know what you're using and, you know, can you change it in Helium Vision? I, I mean, I should take a look at the tool first, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, but, yeah. And, yeah. And to be honest, we try to abstract some of the complexity. Yeah, away. I understand. Uh, but The average user is not going to, hmm. um, you know, not going to need that level of uh, hmm. complexity. However, as we continue to develop, um, if it becomes apparent that our users do need that, then we'll expose those fields. Um, mm. Right now we have a handful of fields that are available and then we abstract away the more complex ones, but there's no reason that we can't expose them because we're utilizing the, uh, the uh, Cloud RF API, which yeah. of course is, is the same engine that is available if you're using their UI. 
yeah. right? It's the same, the same inputs are available. We just don't expose them all. Yeah, it could just be like an advanced user mode. 95% of the people don't need to know it, but people like like me that used to be RF designer for mm -hmm. a network, it's kind of not need to be able to know, you know, what, what propagation model you use and stuff. Exactly right. Yeah. Some of their topo information is on their link on their site. Um, okay, their, cool. It talks about where they're getting their topo information from, yep. but most of that's satellite now, so. Yeah, I'm thinking more like rural Sweden. <laughs> Not so much here. I'm not worried about it here, but you know. Well, I mean, satellites are, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's over. You know, it's global. So, uh, so yeah. somebody asked a question. question if if uh, Helium Vision will be usable for 5G. And um, I already had that question come up. And I, I, uh, I'm not an RF guy, if that's not clear. I'm, I'm an RF idiot. Um, I'm a software geek, but. I did run that question by Alex at CloudRF, and he said, uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's no reason that it won't support 5G. Now that everyone has the 5G in their in their bloodline with the with the, with the vaccinations. Um, yeah, yeah, in the the chip, where you know wherever you get that injected when you go get your physical. <laughs> so the, the point map that you were talking about what was interesting to me is the elevation and i don't remember which maps but i i tested out a bunch of different maps like clicking on different elevations that should be about the same but we're massively uh different meters of difference uh so if you have anything that that you can advise about that is it generally not reliable the the maps sources for uh, elevation did you did you ask this uh you asked this question in discord yeah no, I don't think I did. Oh, somebody asked the same question where they're like, they're testing a lot long on like Google and then they come to do the same thing within uh, Helium Vision and they're questioning the, the ground elevation. Does that sound right? Uh, no, I mean within the same application. So we, I, I went around different maps and um, tested like places nearby that were the same, you know, essentially elevation, but found that meters of 50 were different. <laughs> Not not in your application per se, but like in, in map uh, sources in general. And I'm wondering if that's just a, a common thing we shouldn't really. Well, a lot of times you'll have those elevation sources that are that are combined. And so a lot of times you'll have, you know, topo um, elevation from a number of different sources that may be, uh, you know, combined into a data set, um, I believe. There's certainly yeah. that. And the other thing that I would say is what are you using to compare to that's making you question it? Uh, because I, I would say if you're you unless you're using a sensor, if you're using your eyeballs, eyeballs can be extremely deceiving. No, no, I'm just saying like if you're on a map and you move the cursor over and take another point, so it's uh -huh. a relatively the same same ground level. Um, there, there, I noticed differences that were like, okay, so how can I figure out planning of elevation and, and uh, you know, that, that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I, I would say, I mean, we're talking a bit abstractly, right? Because you're talking about other software altogether. You're not even necessarily talking about Helium Vision in particular. Um, so I, I, can't, I can't really speak to, to that. Um, within Helium Vision, you know, what we're sending over to Cloud RF for simulations is height above ground anyway. And so when we'll, they're going to use whatever their data set is, which may not even be the same um, in terms of what you're seeing in Helium Vision. So it's, it, I don't know. I mean, this is a challenging question to try to answer because I don't know that there's a, a right answer. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess it's just a, like whenever you're looking at maps in general, whoever satellite or however they uh, gathered that data, when you're trying to plot points, you're just uh, kind of going on faith that it's generally the kind of height that you're looking for or not. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Dave, can I ask a quick question? Yeah, I'm John. I'm new here. Um, I was using your thing yesterday. I'm, I'm new on that too, but 
I love the idea of this multi-point. I did the multi-point on a potential placement and it failed. Um, and I was wondering, well, gee, what does that mean? And also, gee, did I pay a DC for a failed RF simulation? So, so that's the question? Yeah. Okay. So the answer is no, you were not charged uh, a simulation credit unless it successfully ran. Okay. So that's the, the, the first uh, and probably the more important one, because everybody would want to know that, right? Hey, if my simulation failed, did I get charged? Well, I, ain't worried, I ain't much worried about 1DC, but I, well, just, soon have, I just soon have the, the simulation. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, to be clear, it's not a data credit. Let's not confuse those terms. Um, it's, it's a simulation credit within Helium Vision. Um, and, and the cost of those is significantly different. So oh, let's, okay. let's, <laughs> Uh, and then to, to answer your question about why it may have failed, um, if you go inside your past simulations in Helium Vision, you can inspect a failed simulation and then you can open up the error panel and it will oh, hopefully right. give you an explanation. And um, if it's not obvious why, you're welcome to reach out to me directly, um, either via the Helium Vision channel or um, you, can, you can open up, there's a support um, section within the application and that'll actually create a ticket which is probably the safer way to make sure it doesn't get lost because there's like 10 ways that people try to communicate with me cool and, and the the support section so anybody in here if you need me the support section is the safe way to make sure i don't miss you um if, if i run it again would would you expect it'll fail again or not um if it's the exact same parameters and it's uh it's probably fail again huh very possible that it would, um, but but you're certainly welcome to try. You won't get charged for the, the simulation credit if it fails. But um, if you go inspect the, the past simulation and you look at why it failed, you might get an inclination as to whether it's an issue with the software. Um, you know, we, we've made uh, 16 releases in the last two or three days. So it's possible that, that the, whatever caused the simulation to fail has already been resolved. Um, okay. or it's possible that there could still be uh, a bug out there that we need to tackle. So, you know, certainly don't be afraid to reach out. You know, I, I'm happy to assist when you have issues because they might be issues that other people are having and just nobody's mentioned it yet. All right. I'll keep that in mind and say something if I think you, you'll um, benefit. Well, I appreciate that. I say, say something if you see something. Is that what that is? <laughs> yeah, so, something like that. Um, I, there's no shortage of, of people providing feedback, but uh, it's, <laughs> generally speaking, it's all good. There's there's just a few of those uh, folks that are the squeaky wheels. It doesn't matter yeah. how it works, but that's okay. Well, and I've said this on this program before that um, you, if, if you really understand like the value of what, what Helium Vision gives you, then the cost is a non-issue. I mean, or it should absolutely be a non-issue on this um, because what it takes to roll out a hotspot or to relocate a hotspot to, you know, contact a host, you know, get a hotspot back from them, um, you know, for, you know, relocate to another place, do antenna installations. If you have all that information like beforehand, then it's, I, I mean, you, even just in the gas, it takes you to drive to the location. You're going to, you're going to be ahead of the game. So. I uh, I do want I do want to piggyback on uh, Travis's like custom styles thing. I want I want to see what you guys come up with. So like we got to figure out where to post those because you know I only use the default Helium Vision map. I don't even use the other ones that ship with with Mapbox. But I'm sure you guys will come up with some super cool stuff. So I want to see those. Yeah, I there's one I really want to load up where it gives you just kind of like large main streets with large text around it. And so it's easier for like mobile kind of, um, you know, reading or, you know, yeah. so you can see the information on a, on a car dashboard or something um, and, and not have to, you know, really kind of peer in or, you know, worry about, you know, everything is blue and black and it looks cool, but, you know, can't really read shit. So uh, yeah. anything, pardon me. Um, ditto, ditto. Yeah. So that's that's really the map that, and, and that's that's really what I was thinking when I initially, you know, uh, was asking you that question about it because I just want a high visibility dashboard type 
um, yeah. map readout. And so, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I'd, I'd love someone else to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm um, interested to see what you guys come up with. Cool, man. Cool. Well, thank you very much for all the hard work that you've done on this project. I mean, it's just, it, it's incredible the number of the releases that you've been knocking out. And uh, if anyone hasn't checked out Helium Vision, what's wrong with you? I mean, get it together, folks. Uh, <laughs> Is that directed uh, to me? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, this is this is. If you're talking about deploying hotspots, period, it's 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 a tool set that you really can't uh, well, afford to go without. I don't think. Um, you know, if you're wanting to have like solid deployments. So. Yeah, if you're if you're just deploying one hotspot, you probably don't need it. It's probably overkill. But you know, if you're just deploying twenty five, like no brainer. You may have just gotten a new nick a new nickname. Overkill. Overkill. <laughs>